Welcome to the third installment in the Eight Essential Steps to Clawhammer Banjo video series. To recap where we've come from so far, in the first video I uh, discussed with you the two primary motions of the picking hand, which are the up and down hammer motion and the side to side strum. In the next video, I introduced you to the concept of the thumb rest, which is that at the conclusion of either of those motions, the thumb should come to rest pressed up against the fifth string, like this for the hammer, and like this for the strum. Hopefully you've practiced the exercises from both of those videos and are all set to proceed with this lesson. Before I begin, if you haven't done so already, um, sign up using the uh, link in the uh, video description for the written materials that supplement these lessons. And uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments uh, regarding the materials as you work through them, please feel free to, to leave that, that in the uh, comment section and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. So in today's video, we're going to work on striking the individual strings with our picking finger. And we have three main goals here to accomplish uh, when learning this particular skill. First is we want to be able to pick each string cleanly. Second, we want to be able to do so without looking at our picking hand. And third, we want to be able to modulate the amount of force we use when we strike the string, which will allow us to vary the volume of our playing. As you begin to work on the skill of striking single strings with your picking finger, uh, you're undoubtedly going to be inaccurate at first. Um, you're going to miss the strings, you're going to hit the wrong one, you're going to hit multiple when you're trying to hit one. Um, this happens to everybody when they first get started. And um, in fact, it's probably, you know, it's a bizarre idea to begin with to think that by doing this with our hand, we can somehow cleanly pick the uh, individual strings of the banjo. But such a thing is possible just with a little bit of dedicated practice. Um, so don't get frustrated. Uh, remember that most of the changes that occur in the brain to support any new skill are going to happen when you're sleeping anyhow, based on what you've done the day prior. So the real goal of your practice session is simply to give your brain a signal that you'd like it to change and to tell it how exactly, you'd want, it to, how exactly you want it to change. In other words, the skill that you want to learn. So if you put in a little bit of focused effort day in and day out, over time uh, you'll get better and I think uh, you'll probably surprise yourself at how quickly you're able to learn something that uh, at first blush seems impossible to do. So to start with, just try striking each individual string by itself, the first string, second string, third string, and fourth string with your picking finger. Um, Almost certainly you're going to find that striking the first string is the easiest uh, simply because it only has one string next to it. Um, as you work on striking each individual string, there are a couple of things that I'd like for you to keep in mind. So the first thing that I want you to keep in mind is to start out with a very light touch and then gradually increase the amount of force you give to the string. As I said in an earlier video, uh, you'll probably be surprised at just how little effort it takes to get a sound out of the string. Um, if you're able to develop a light touch from the beginning, it's going to make your life a lot easier down the road, particularly as you try to develop speed, um, and it also will allow you to vary the volume uh, in the playing of any given tune. The second thing to remember is that ultimately we want to be able to strike the strings uh, with our picking hand without having to look at it at all. It may seem somewhat counterintuitive, um, 
but you'll actually be able to develop accuracy, accuracy uh, more easily and quickly uh, without looking at your hand than you will if you do. Now, at first, uh, you're going to want to look um, just because it's hard enough without doing so. Um, but over time, as you get a little bit comfortable with it, start playing around with not looking at your hand as you're trying to strike the individual strings. It turns out that your brain is actually quite good at monitoring the position of your body, including the position of your hands, without any visual feedback whatsoever. Um, and in fact, these body-to-brain feedback loops operate a lot faster than the vision-to-brain uh, circuits do, which means they're a lot better suited to playing a musical instrument than the, vision, than the um, visual feedback networks are. It's no coincidence that uh, some of the best musicians we've ever known um, have lost their sight and have had no choice but to use these better uh, body-to-brain uh, networks to uh, develop their playing. The other thing that not looking uh, helps with is in getting you in the habit of using your ears as your primary means of feedback as opposed to your eyes. We're playing music, so we really want to uh, judge how we're doing by what we hear and not by what we see. And so starting out now, getting in that habit is, uh, is a great thing to be doing. So go ahead and practice a bit uh, trying to strike each of the individual strings with your picking hand using the hammer motion. Don't forget about the thumb rest, so make sure to uh, uh, keep the flesh of your thumb pressed up against the fifth string at the uh, end of the stroke. And do that for a little bit. Once you feel a little comfortable with it, uh, we're going to break out the metronome for a few more exercises. Okay, so I've got out the trusty metronome again, and we're going to start with the first exercise. So in this exercise, what I want you to do is uh, we're going to strike uh, each string four times, starting with the first string, progressing up towards the fourth string, and then back down towards the first string. And in tab format, it looks like this. And I'm going to, once again, start with the lower setting of the metronome. It's set to around 80 beats per minute. And once again, I'm uh, going to play one stroke for every two clicks of the metronome. Now, as you probably know, I have a crea I've created a metronome playlist um, on YouTube if you don't have your own metronome to practice with. And once again, do this exercise starting with the slower 80 beats per minute setting, and then maybe progress may around to the 100 to the 110 beats per minute mark. You don't really need to go much faster than that to get the basic uh, idea of this and to be sure that you've gotten the technique down pretty well. So for the second exercise, we're going to strike each individual string one time, starting with the first, and then moving back up to the fourth, and then back down to the first. And in tab, it looks like this. And we'll start with a slower metronome setting again, around 80 beats per minute.
So for the third exercise, we're going to follow a pattern similar to exercise one, but instead, after each hammer, we're going to throw in a strum. And once again, we're still going to play one stroke for every two clicks of the metronome. In tab, it looks like this, and it should sound about like this. And for the last exercise, we're going to use a pattern similar to the second exercise, but once again, uh, insert a strum after every hammer. So it looks like this in tab, and here's what it should sound like. So that should be enough to keep you busy until the next installment. Um, as I said earlier, this is going to feel awkward at first, but if you just stick with it, put in about 20 to 30 minutes a day of focused practice time, um, bit by bit you'll get better each day, and in doing so you'll be forming some great habits that rather than limiting uh, what you can do will ultimately allow you to reach your fullest musical potential. So practice hard, and I'll see you in the fourth lesson.